I guess there's been enough water under the bridge, enough time has elapsed for me to speak intelligently about the Spyderco Paramilitary 3 and how it stacks up against, well, the benchmark, the finest EDC knife of all time, the Benchmade Osborne 940. Now, several of you astute viewers have noticed that I have been carrying the Benchmade, excuse me, the Spyderco, <laughs> in lieu of the Benchmade uh, for some time now. Uh, and we're going to have to make a decision. Uh, I decided today, it's, it's, I'm going to have to, to decide which one's going to go in the safe and which one is going to be my daily companion. Now, if you're not a knife person and if you think that this sort of thing is kind of strange and that a knife is a knife is a knife, then you don't know anything. <laughs> because us guys that are into knives, this is an important decision, right? This is something, I mean, it, I'm not going to say it's as important as uh, who you choose to marry, but it's not unimportant, right? It's something that's going to be on your person uh, that you're going to be carrying, that you're going to have out a tool that you're going to be using, what? 50 times a day, 25 times a day, a lot. So it's an important to have the right decision because what you choose, uh, well, let's just get into it. Go get yourself a cup of coffee, your favorite adult beverage. We have a lot to talk about here. And at the end of this, and, and to be honest with you, I have not decided. I will make my decision. We'll make our decision together here, uh, but we'll go over, kind of go over the pros and cons of the two finest EDC knives ever made. I don't care what you say. I don't want to hear about your Kershaw and your zero tolerance and your buck and your CRKT. Anyone who knows anything, we all know that these are the only two, <laughs> the only two knives worth happening, right? So what we have here, let's open them up. We got the Paramilitary 3 Spider Co. made in USA, of course, and the much loved Benchmade Osborne 940, also made in the USA in uh, my hometown, Oregon City, Oregon. Man, it's a tough decision. Much, uh, a lot, very different. Definitely two different knives. Um, couldn't hardly be more different. Let, let's just talk about the features here. Okay, so let's start with the, the original here. So the, the 940. So as you guys know, I have uh, I've loved this knife, carried it forever. I have met so many of you who are carrying the exact same knife. And I've never heard anyone say anything bad about it, apart from just the price. But we have um, a beautiful... Just a beautiful um, access lock knife. Um, it's got a little bit of a non-traditional blade. You know, kind of an old-fashioned looking blade when you compare it to the Spyderco there, but um, kind of a modified Tanto deal. Uh, one of my bigger, we'll get into gripes um, but, uh, later, but one of my biggest gripes has been that this has been a difficult knife to sharpen. Um, I think by and large because of the thickness of the blade. But there's also a trade-off, right? And that trade-off is incredible strength. Look at the look at the back of it. Look how thick the spine is on that. Um, again, prying paint cans and and you know things that that are outside of its original design. It, it's able to do that just because it's so strong. It's so light because of the aluminum scales and the way that they've recessed them. You know the knife into there and then the titanium backspacer. I mean, it's a classic. It's an absolute classic. Still relevant today. I mean, this knife is what had how many iterations? The last time I was on the Benchmade website, they had carbon fiber ones and all sorts, and they had pillar construction, you know, kind of trying to make it a little bit more modern. But the thing that always, after carrying the Spider, Spider Co., that the way I guess I kind of feel about this knife now is it does seem a little old fashioned, um, as strange as that sounds, and I don't really know why that is. Axis lock, of course, excellent. One thing I've really enjoyed about this knife is it's probably one of the fastest opening knives that's non-assisted that I have ever used. It's very uh, enjoyable to flip. There's many ways you can do it. Once it wears in and you get a little bit more proficient, of course, I think the favorite way is to pull that axis lock, lock in and give it a flip. And you can, you can uh, with a little practice, you can do them both ways. Um, very much enjoyed that. Very, very strong lock. Solid, beautiful knife. Just melts away in the pocket. You don't even know it's there. You may notice I don't have uh, pocket clips on there. No more pocket clips for me. As I've always said, pocket clips are designed by, knife, designed by knife manufacturers so that we lose our knives. Um, and I, I know you guys haven't, but if you work in the forest uh, around branches, they hook under there and they pull out. I mean, I've had it catch and, and hook onto my seatbelt in my car before. So, I mean, they, I just don't use them anymore. And I don't, I don't miss it at all. This was good enough for Granddad. He carried the old charade, old timer, tri-blade. It didn't have any pocket clip on it. He didn't want for anything. 
So uh, I take those off and my record is 100%. Since removing the knife clips, I've ha I haven't lost a knife. <laughs> so <laughs> take that for what it's worth. Um, that's it. Yeah, basic, I mean, we know it, right? Now the Spyderco, so Spider, Spyderco came into my life um, you know, a month or two, a couple months back, maybe one of my subscribers sent it, S30V USA made. One of my favorite things here, you can see, that'll focus right there, is uh, that Sal put on there, Golden Colorado USA Earth. It's such a nice little touch, you know, a little feature. Um, I, I like that. Of course, no finger stud or no thumb stud for opening uh, assistant, assisted opening on this, but it has the spider hole, which is, it's a strange looking knife. And I, it took me a long time to kind of warm up to that leaf style of blade. I thought it was a little bit odd, but after living with it and using it, um, it's, it's, I'm a big fan. And I'm a big fan primarily because that's the spider hole that they have is in my opinion, um, the best way, the easiest way to open a knife. And it doesn't matter what you're wearing on your hands. You can have your winter's gloves on. Um, you can have welding gloves on. You can have, and that's what I've, one thing I've enjoyed about it so much is that it doesn't matter the situation, even if your hands are cold and not working very well, that spider hole, the way that it's put there and the way it's so pronounced there on that paramilitary three um, lends it to very easy opening. We've got uh, G10 scales. You know, some guys talking about old fashioned, they might say that that's old fashioned. And I get that for sure. I remember looking at, uh, I think it was, maybe it was the Kershaw catalog a few years ago. I think in every knife of their whole lineup was black G10 scales. Yeah, so, <laughs> so there, there is that. Um, it was a little grippy when I first took it out of the box. It was too grippy, actually. It, um, it bothered me. You know, it, it was a kind of, um, you know, the more older I get, the more I am sensitive to, <clears throat> excuse me, the way things feel um, and textures, um, whether it be the clothing that I wear, I've just become more sensitive to it. Maybe I'm going crazy. I don't know, maybe some sensory issue, but it was very grippy and it, it bothered me and it kind of felt like grabbing um, sandpaper. But now that I've carried it, uh, it is delightfully textured. Lots of really good grip, but it's not smooth, but it's just perfect, actually. And I, I do like the G10 handles. They're flat, completely flat. Uh, but they are a beautiful shape. And sometimes, I mean, you know, sometimes if you're in a situation where you can't carry a, can I say it, a G-U-N, um, then we're left to this. Not that I would ever want to have to fight with something like this, but if you had to, um, both of these are pretty well suited. You know, you could grab it in a reverse grip like this. And I can tell you, if some dude was standing in the shadows with this gleaming uh, in, the, in the moonlight, um, I think I'd move on. Um, how do you know if the guy, what, what his skills are? But the same can be said for the 940. Not that that's a big part of it, but it's just something to consider, right? It may come down to it, and having this would be better than having nothing at all, right? We have a lanyard loop on the, on the paramilitary, which we don't have on the, the 940, uh, which is not important to me. You know, Brian, um, my neighbor, he, he, this is his carry knife. Uh, he has a tan one, and he's actually wove a small lanyard in there, and he likes it. He says it's easier to pull out of his pocket. Um, so I, I get that. If that's important to you, you know, that's, that's, it's there. Um, but it's not important to me. Uh, the other thing that I really uh, enjoy about this over the 940 is that, um, that pillar construction, so that it's, it's kind of, it's passed through, it's open here. Because a lot of dirt and pocket lint, I mean, just right there, you can see there's a, some sort of a, something gross in there. Uh, it just flows right out where the, the 940, it kind of gets stuck in there and gets grody. And I know you can get models that have the same pass through deal. I'm just comparing the ones that I have here, right? So I do like that. Um, but they're both incredibly light. Um, I don't know, nor do I care, but I, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two. I don't know, maybe the spider is a bit heavier, maybe not, I can't really say. Of course, we have a very different locking system here, which is maybe a negative on the, on the spider Co over the excellent axis lock we have on the, on the Benchmade, which is so nice to use and so strong and one-handed opening and one-handed closing is so simple, so fast. Uh, but it is a little bit fiddly, uh, that thumb stud compared to the, the spider hole. Now, deploying this knife is awesome. 
very nice. It has, it has a click that's very satisfying, maybe even more satisfying than, than the Benchmade. Definitely, it's a little bit muted as it, uh, it's kind of a wedge lock as it falls into place there, but man, the Spyderco, it has a click with, it's the boss of clicks, it's like with authority. Excuse me, do you hear that? That sounds nice. It, it sounds nice and it feels nice. And that, um, it, it, again, what it is, it's just a little detail that every time you open it just gives you that little rush of pleasure that you are, you are holding and you, you own a quality, a quality item here that is well made. Now on the downside of this, I don't even know what it's called, wedge lock, liner lock. The downside of this is that when I have found that when opening it, um, the way I hold it is my middle finger right there is kind of against that lock. It gives you a little bit of a bite. It stings. It comes out of there and that spring snaps so hard that it, it hits me in the hand. And I'm not going to say it's painful, but it, it is a little uncomfortable. And I've kind of had to kind of, you know, when I think about it, you know, like get that finger off there so that it doesn't snap me when I open it. But again, that hasn't been such a big deal that I've uh, decided not to carry it. The, the worst thing about this, though, is I find it more difficult to close the knife once it's open. So if, let's say you're working or you're cutting or opening up a box or something and when you want to. I have not found a way to, to truly one hand close it. I mean, it can be done. It's awkward there. Um, what I ended up doing is, is um, pushing in the, the liner lock in the back and then touching it on something, usually the, the, my pants leg, to start it to folding, moving my hand out of the way and then closing it. So there's always that risk that when you do this, your finger is in the way, right? So maybe you have a better way, maybe you found a quicker way to do it. I just, in, you know, I, I mean, I haven't sat for hours and hours and thought about it, but uh, I've just noticed that closing it takes an extra level of care uh, that you don't have to do on the Benchmade. Because what I typically do is when I'm done using it, I'll, I grab the, the axis lock like this, I pull it in, and then flip, flip the knife in. So I like that portion of the, of the bench made better. So in, in just day-to-day, -day, wh what are you using a knife for? What's, what's the day-to-day -day task uh, for me? I cut a lot of cardboard, I open up a lot of boxes, um, and I use it a fair amount for food prep. It seems that, um, especially in the summertime, when we're out camping or we're in the van, uh, Mrs. W will ask me, you know, she'll be making, you know, some, wanting to cut some slices of cheese or something. And she's like, do you have a knife? And I'll hand her this knife. This is a really good knife for food prep, uh, for cutting apples. It's nice. It's that, um, it's at that full flat ground there. It's very skinny. It has an awesome tip on it. The tip on it is so sharp. It's, it's got that cat claw sticky uh, sharpness, which has been really nice for pulling out slivers. So for food prep and just having that extra surface on there, like when you're, you know, sometimes if you don't have, you know, you're cutting some summer sausages, you know, and you're kind of you're using your knife as an eating instrument, right? Just having that, all that extra on there and it being flat um, is, is a good, you can balance food and it's just a great food prep knife, which it sounds funny, but I mean, that is a, a good portion of what I use an EDC knife for. Where the Benchmade is not a good food prep knife. It's so strong and it's so, so thick in the back of the spine there that it um, just has never, it's never been a great cutter, to be honest. And it's been difficult to sharpen. And no matter how you, f you go about it, you're never gonna get that sticky cat claw sharp tip like you can on a full flat ground spider co. So I'd have to give the nod just to overall use excluding the prying and the heavy-duty use um, to the Spider Co. Now, I can't open a paint can with this. I can't most likely tighten, tighten or, or get a screw loose with this in an emergency where I have found that, that this knife, you can. It just got that, it's just got that strength, um, that it, it's just su such a strong, strong knife. But, um, I mean, you could just go back and forth. I mean, you can make arguments for each one all day long. I was trying to think if there's anything else before we make our decision that I, 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 it, I guess let's close with this. <clears throat> How does it, d does it give you the fizz? Like, d does it, is it, is there something about it that you can't put your finger on that just delights you? Uh, when I'm thinking, 
like in the morning, you know, when I, when I am getting dressed and I grab my wallet and my knife and sitting on the nightstand, you know, what, what, what is my, what is the experience when I grab this and put it in my pocket? You know, does it give me that, that, <laughs> that pleasure? Which one gives me the most pleasure? Well, the spider co even after carrying it for so long, um, it still is a treat. It's, it gives me that same treat that I, that I had when I opened the box for the very first time. And I know that's not really fair because I've carried the 940s for so long and they're su such a classic that um, you know, maybe too much time has went by to have that feeling, but I don't have that feeling as much as I do with the, with the Spider Co. Um, so there is that, and that, that's important. Or uh, another thing uh, is, let's say you're waiting at a doctor's office or the dentist, and you know, you've got 15, 20 minutes to kill, you know, you're kind of bored. You know, one thing I typically do is <laughs> start pulling things out of your pocket, you know, because I need to ha do something with my hands. Uh, I, I always enjoy taking the spider co out and, I guess, just fondling it and opening it and hearing that beautiful click uh, and looking at it and the feel of it is nice. Um, it just seems to never get old, but I can say the same thing about the 940. And the more, the more wear and tear you get on it and, and you start to see the anodizing coming off and the years of carrying it and the knives just get softer and softer, you know, the more years you carry them in the pocket, you know, you kind of get more attached to them, more cust accustomed to them. I mean, it gets to the point where you carry something for 10, 15, 20 years, it, you, it becomes such a part of you that even if someone were to offer you a brand new one, I think most of us would never, wouldn't trade up because it just took so long and we shared so many experiences together that um, you kind of get attached to it. I'll close with this. I had a friend that uh, left his, lost his Benchmade and what happened is he, he'd left it in his tackle box and it, had, it spent the whole year in there until the next season and he opened it up and he found it and it was rusty. It was in pretty bad shape. It wouldn't hardly open. Well, he sent it into Benchmade with very explicit instructions as to only replace the things that were absolutely necessary. And if they could, buy all, if they could save as much of the knife as possible, he would appreciate that. Because he had carried that knife for so long and he didn't want it being all replaced with, with new parts. So I get that. You know, I'm not the only one and I think you guys can probably relate to that. So let's get down to it. So which one am I going to... I'm going to leave here when I turn this video off to go edit this and I'm going to put one in the knife box in the gun safe and I'm going to put one in my pocket and which one's it going to it's going to be well there isn't any question it's going to be the <laughs> it's going to be the spider co sorry benchmade you're a fine knife and if you own one uh, <laughs> you can still you can, you can still <laughs> you can still live a partially full life <laughs> Turn the camera on. I was thinking of the doctor, you know, trying to to explain to the guy, "Oh, I just amputated your both of your legs, but you can still enjoy a full." <laughs> no, it's not, it's not that bad. Should you sell, should you sell your Benchmade and buy a paramilitary three if you already own it? Absolutely not. Uh, if I were to, uh, here's a question. This is a good question. I'm gonna have to be honest here. If I were to lose this tomorrow, right? Oh, it's gone. You know, I don't have it anymore. Would I be bummed if I had to go back and resurrect this out of the safe and, and carry this in my pocket for the, for the rest of my days here and my short, my short life here on earth, right? Would I? I would not be so upset that I would buy a paramilitary three, but I would think about it. I would definitely think about it, but I don't think I would. I think I'd be content with this. But that's the one. So you, again, if you own this, you know it, you can still live a full, <laughs> full life. But if you haven't made the investment in a, a really premium, top quality EDC knife, you want something that um, w that you'll just enjoy to your dying days. Uh, it's the it's the paramilitary three for sure. Brian and I have have had endless conversations about this, you know, because we have this in common carrying the same knife, and um, he he's really a knife and flashlight guy, and he said, you know, even he goes, I can tell you, even among the Spider Co. faithful, the fanboys, which are, they are, they are real. Um, I mean, no question. Even they, who love all things Spider Co., have just, have feel that there's something special about this particular knife, um, above and beyond um, maybe some of the other ones. And, and I don't know for sure, you know, I'm not that, I'm not really into it that much. 
Um, but I trust Brian. That there's, there's something about it. You know, sometimes they just get things right, um, and things are are just done perfectly well or close enough to perfect that they they just give you the fizz and you just enjoy them, right? So that's it. That's what you will see. Will will we revisit this in uh, maybe next Christmas? Possibly. Is there something else that could come into my life? Another knife that would replace this one? I ha I highly doubt it. I don't think so. I think this is I think this is the one. This is a a beautiful beautiful knife that gives me pleasure um, to no end. So well done, Spyderco. So that's it. That's my review on the uh, my my comparison between the 940 and the Paramilitary Three. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Keep us in your prayers and may God bless you and your family. We'll see you guys on the next video.